So when you do you look at that mole map, why don't I do a simplified mole map? To make the mole map a little easier, I'm going to do a little mole map. I will write it down on the board, and you kind of pay attention as I do that. But I can cool thing about what I'm about to draw, I can file print it. So in the middle of the mole map are moles. I'm going to say moles of uh, G and moles of S. I'm going to put a line down the middle of it, where G stands for the given chemical. Okay? You'll understand this in a minute. And if I branch off of this, I'm going to make just three branches. Your mole map has uh, more than three branches, because uh, there really are more than three. But these are the, the most important three, so maybe that helps us out. The first one is mass, which is in grams. When we're doing a conversion from grams to moles, what do you use? Grams to moles, which is the molar mass. So you can say so many grams in one mole. And you get this number from the periodic table. If I want to go to volume, which is liters, you're going to say 22.4 liters in one mole. And if you're going to go to particles, you're going to use 6.02 E23 particles in one mole. And now we've got three more, and it's just a mirror image. So what goes on the mirror image? We'll have mass, volume, and particles. And actually, let me say this. This is mass of your G. And this will be, use the molar mass of the given, 22.4 liters in one mole of your, I'm not given, given. This is your stock. And this is your stock, stock, and then 6.02 E23 particles of sod in one mole of sod. Now, when you're going from moles to moles, you will always say X number of moles of the S over X number of moles of the G. Now, what does S and G stand for? G stands for the given chemical, and S stands for the soft chemical. All right, so that's kind of the mole map, the short version of the mole map. All right, so let me show you what we're talking about. Let's say we have a reaction. We have this one several times. In the hey, guys who are not, you know, if you're, if you're working on stuff, that's great, but if you're just visiting about other stuff, some people aren't. I know, but some aren't, and it's distracting. There's a reaction, right? It's an unbalanced reaction, so when I balance this, I've got an O problem, so I put a line here and a line here. I'm going to put a 2 here and a 3 here. And for my KCL, I'll have to put a 2 here. Well, so the whole point of stoichiometry is, you know, like Cameron made cookies this morning, right? If you start with one cup of flour, how many cookies can you make? One cup. Okay. If you start with 10 pounds of sugar, how many cookies can you make? Or whatever. <laughs> Depends on, you know, assuming you have plenty of other things. Well, that's basically what stoichiometry does. Let's say I start with 3.2 grams of potassium chlorate. The question would be, how many liters of oxygen can I produce? How many cookies can you make, for lack of a better term, right? If you were to think of it. It's a recipe, and it's a mathematical way to predict it. Well, what we can do is we go back to our mole map. Now, if you, actually, let's back forward. I'm starting, well, who's my given chemical? Which one do I know something about? This is given, right? This is sought. On, on the podcast, when I made this, I said, what well, a question mark by it. That's the one you're looking for, right? So I want to convert, as we would say, grams of potassium chlorate to liters of oxygen. Now we've got a road, or a map. So we go back to our map. Here's our map. I'm starting from where and going to where. I've got a mass of something, right? And I want to go to a liter of volume or something. I'm going to take my number, multiply by this fraction, multiply by this fraction, multiply by this fraction, and get my answer. 
There'll be four fractions. I know there's three here, but you guys got the starting number. So let's go back to our problem. So I'm going to start with 3.2 grams of KClO3. Notice, very important, that I write grams and I write KClO3. I'm going to put the unit and the <coughs> chemical identity. Now, let's go back to our map and figure out what we're going to multiply by. Grams KCL3 is where I started right here. Now I'm going to multiply by this fraction. This fraction comes from the PT. PT stands for periodic table, right? So I'm going to use, it's grams per mole. So I'm going to say grams of KCL3 in one mole of KCL3. Now, that's upside down from what was on the mole map. Because I need to make sure that I get the GCLO, KCL3 to cancel out. Now, where do I find this value? I find the weight of KCLO3. Comes out that that's, all the, I just know, it's 122.5. Now, everybody knows where I got that. I went to the periodic table, found the weight of K, CL, and three O's, and added them up. Okay? Now, that's the first fraction. So if we go back to our mole map, what have we done? We've gone from here to here. We've got to get all the way over here to the green circle, here, right? So I'm now going to multiply by this fraction, the green mole mole conversion. It's mole S over mole G. S standing for sought, G for given. So we go back to here. What am I going to do? It's the mole to mole ratio. Now, actually, let's back up. What's going to cancel out? Grams KCL of three cancels. The so now I want to get to moles of KCLO3 to cancel. So I'm going to write moles of KCLO3 on the bottom. What's going to go on top? Moles of O2. Now O2 is my sought, and my given was the KCLO3. Now what numbers, what values go in here? What goes under moles of KCLO3? A two does because this comes from the balanced equation. Actually, let's write that down on our mole map. On the mole map, where do I get these values? <coughs> from the balanced equation, right? So it's the coefficients, we say, in the balanced equation. So the, what's going to be this blue number? That's a three here, right? From the balanced equation. Yeah. Oh. So I went and got him and took him over there. Okay. Got his stuff, so I'm going to take it to the floor. Okay. Oh, no. All right, and then the last step, what's the last step here? Oops, hello. The last step is we want to, we now have, we've gotten to here. We need to go from here to the volume. Somebody used the 22.4 number, right? So, one mole of O2 is 22.4 liters of O2. Now if we go back, what can I cancel? Moles of KCLO3 cancels. And now moles of O2 cancel. I then take my calculator. Now what, what can I put in my calculator? 3.2 divided by 122.5 times 3 divided by 2 times 22.4. And that will give you your answer, and the answer will be in whatever units of liters of O2. I don't know the answer, but you can do your mathematics. That's it, guys. That's how you do stoichiometry. Use this mole map to help you figure that out. Does that help? Now, limiting reactants, you just have to do like stoichiometry four or five times, right, with a limiting reactant problem. Three, actually. There's a lot of extra work to do. But follow that. This is this is the basics of stoichiometry. This covers 7.1 and 7.2. Notice something I did do when I started. Like 7.2 doesn't start with a balanced equation. Because you see, the beginning of every stoichiometry problem is a balanced chemical equation, which is unit 6, right? How to write reactions and how to balance it. So you've got to start there. Otherwise, essentially, that won't, you have to know this number, the 3 to 2 ratio. You have to start with a balanced equation. So 7.1, I give you all the balanced equations. 7.2, I say you have to write out the balanced equation before you do the problem. Okay?